Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. A little bit later on, my guest will be on the show. Peter Benson is here today, and we're going to be talking about tensor energy tools and energy tools for ascension and cos cosmic, I'm going to throw that in, cosmic and conscious living, because that's what I'm all about. And by the way, for those of you watching YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, I'm wearing one of his magnificent pieces. And we're going to be showing you lots and talking about this. So join us. And if you're listening to the podcast and want to see more, you can also hop over to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And this show has been nominated for two people's choice podcast awards for a Webby award. We are listed in Welp magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. And we won the COVR award for the best radio and podcast show recently. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dean here in access consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. If you want to join their class, become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dean here, H E E R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I teach spiritual messengers how to write a book. I also show you how to take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting for you. And I also show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. I have a five-day challenge rolling out. Many people joined last time who listened to this podcast you are welcome to join this time. It is a five-day podcast interview challenge. You're going to learn how to get a yes to get booked on the shows you want to get booked on. What are the right shows for you? What kind of media to put together so that you get a yes and you know professionally what to turn over? How to have your speaking and talking points together, aligning with the right shows for hundreds of bookings, and how to use this media visibility so you sell books, fill workshops, start to gain clients and followers, and fill your database with those who know you and like you. I've sent hundreds and hundreds of people like you just now out into the world. We've got, we've had just another wave of them go out and they're having massive success. You can too. So join the five day challenge. All you do is work with me for 45 minutes for five days and I send you out in the world. Voila. Go to Debbie Dashing, excuse me, that's my website. Instead, you want to go to Debbie D.net slash challenge. It's D E B B I D dot net slash challenge. And I will see you there. Can't wait to work with you. I've got Peter Benson here today. He is the creator and CEO of Energies of Service. With a background as a mechanic and technical engineer, Peter went through a major awakening process that opened up his connection to his higher self and the angelic realm. He discovered his angelic origins as part of Archangel Michael's army of light and guided by Archangel Michael and Ascended Masters, Peter was introduced to the tensor technology and its healing properties. He conducted research that led him to build his first tensor rings, crystals, infused pendants, Merkaba, healing coils, and more. Peter is an international public speaking and the CEO of Energies of Service, and his powerful copper healing and grounding tools are inspired by and channeled from the quantum field of creation. His handcrafted products are carefully attuned energetically to help people heal, balance, and live in harmony with their resonance field. They are energy tools for ascension and conscious living. You can learn more at his website. Go to energiesofservice.com. And I welcome Peter Benson to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here. Oh, thank you, Debbie, for having me on. Um, it's a privilege. It really is. And working with you has been, has been a lot of fun. Um, because we work with you too. So it's, we think that, you know, what you do is fantastic. Um, and it's helping us dramatically. So thank you so much for everything you do. That's so kind. That's so kind. I want, you want, so, I mean, I, we, you and I do work together, which is beautiful. And I'm also friends with you and your wife and I work with your wife. And I mean, you're extraordinary humans as humans and also as creator beings and what you're creating in the world. And when yeah. you and I had our own private Zoom session 
and you were taking me through what you did, I felt like it was mind blowing. So before we even show people, before we even do a show and tell about your magnificent creations, can you explain the work, explain what you create and explain the service you offer? Okay. Well, as you described, yes, I woke up probably about eight years ago and I started going through the process of awakening and understanding, reading and reading books left and right, trying to understand what's going on. And from that point on, um, I, I started I started finding different things that was really clicking with me. Uh, Michael Newton, Brian Weiss, that gave me an interest, you know, introspect on uh, life after death, life between that, you know, life beyond life. Um, and that from there, I found, you know, Slim Sperling, and he's talking about these tensor rings and its life energy. Um, he called it, you know, he, he, he called it uh, life energy and he quoted, he was quoted as saying in his books, it could be, you know, chi or, you know, whatever you want to label it. It's basically life energy. Um, so I started understanding what he was doing and he open sourced his process and everything he did. So basically there are people around the world utilizing this technology and building tools out there, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's not locked away. It's not behind a copyright, you know, so everybody can utilize the tools. Um, the interesting part was when I first started making them, they weren't working. So I had to go through growth and understanding. It took me about six months to make a good ring that would actually work, but that was constant work on myself. So I had to, you know, bring my vibration to a higher place before the tools could be, you know, could work. So it's, yes, everybody can go out and make them, but your intention and your, your vibration has to be high enough to create the tool. So, I mean, these tools are a high vibration tool. So you have to be there to make them. So if you're in good intention, yeah, it's, it's entirely plausible. So that path got me into making the actual larger tensor rings, the small tensor rings, and all the different versions of the tensor rings. Uh, and my first real experience with the tensor rings being powerful and how much they could be influential was working with uh, what they call the does it uh, Tiwatuakan or the Solomon's Cubit. And that one actually changes the color of sound. So <gasps> wait, that wait, wait. one. What? So it changes you, color I'm all of about sound. sound frequency. So what it, explain this? So what this one does is it amplifies the you know amplifies audio, changes its frequency, it tunes it. So tensor technology will neutralize disharmonic frequencies. So you actually have anything that you're doing crystal bows that are out of out of frequency frequency harmony, it will tune them back in. And it actually amplifies. It's like you're taking your crystal bowls and plugging it into an amp, like an electric guitar. It literally gets that loud. Um, they, you know, it turns the it turns your crystal bowls into a much louder tool. Um, what we found was when you spool up the bowl, it you know, it takes a little bit to actually spool it up, but once it's actually at resonance, it stays at resonance for a lot longer as well. So it was really interesting. So I was doing this, and um, I was working with a lady who was doing sound baths. And I gave her four rings to experiment with. She played with them for two days and she texted me back. Can you make me 10 more? Because she had the regular chakra bowls and then she had the higher chakra bowls. So she had 14 bowls. So she wanted one ring for every bowl because it changed the way the bowls actually performed. And they were so much better that she was like, oh, I'm not going back. I want all of the bowls to be in it. So that was my real exposure to how much influence these tensor rings can have on even physical objects i mean there's stories about how slim spurling and his ring was actually physically healing people but for me those were anecdotal because that's all reports in another book so i'm like i understood that and i appreciated everything that was coming through but until i fully experienced it myself i was just like wow this is incredible so yeah okay I want to finish with that sound piece because you may or may not know I do music and I do sound healing, right? I'm, yeah. I sing, I play a hang drum, I play the gong, I play djembe drum. And so we don't use crystal bowls. So what else can this sound ring be used for with sound? It's, it's sound. It doesn't matter. You can stand in the, you can, we can get you a ring that's big enough for you to stand in and it changes your sound. You can get the big enough ring to put it underneath your gongs and it will change the sound of the gong. 
you can do anything with them. It's that's literally because the tensor rings create a field. So if you're looking at this is a ring, right? And the energy comes out both sides like a flashlight. So you're if you stand inside that ring, it's you're in that vortex of energy and it comes out, it, sp it spirals out. So that flashlight of energy is not really a flashlight. It's actually a vortex of energy coming out of it. And then there's an energy film in the middle that changes everything as well. So there's all kinds of different ways you can utilize these tools. And what you mentioned a couple of success stories, you said anecdotal because it was in somebody's book. And I really appreciate that you are looking for the proof yourself and yes. with your creations, Peter, what has happened? Tell me some, a story, a couple of stories, cause I'm super curious. What has happened for people by virtue of using your products? Um, it, it varies depending on what products they are. Um, if you had like the anklets, usually you wear them in pairs, one on each leg. Um, but we were literally at, we were at a conference in Vegas a couple of years back. And this one lady came up to the table and she was literally out of balance so far. It wasn't even funny, but she was, she was trying to keep a higher, you know, a higher vibration. We ended up giving her an ankle only on anklet on one leg. And she literally was walking balanced after that. And she felt normal. So one side of her was fully grounded and ready to go. The other half of her was trying to get off planet or something because she was just not grounded. So she utilized that to actually help ground her. So that was one of the ones I actually seen. Um, I've had people who are very much energy sensitive uh, to the point where uh, they have issues going into conferences and they, they have to prepare themselves mm -hmm. mentally, physically and everything, you know, take a couple Advil before they go or a muscle relaxer, but it just because it's so much energy um, that they're not ready for it. So they come in and they put the anklets on and it's just like the first thing they say is it's, is it, it's getting, it gets got quiet. And they all of a sudden, you can just feel their demeanor just relax. And it's just like they're not overloaded anymore. So the anklets literally cap your energy torus so that it blocks the energy from coming in. So it's really interesting. It's a, we've had this happen many, many, many times with people. And that's really interesting to watch. Um, and the same thing happens with uh, the pendant that you're wearing, which is Archangel Michael. Uh, and that one is... Um, that one has like a pendant that creates a energy shielding effect, just like the anklets, um, but different in a form. So the anklets cap your energy torus. The Michael pendant creates a shield just above your, your emotional field. So if you understand the energy in the way our body has layers, we have the physical body, you have emotional layer, and then that it creates like a, almost a barrier just above that. And it blocks you from other people's energy. So that creates a shielding there, but it also has three other crystals in it that create a calming effect, a clearing of your energy and the Turk and the green mica, which is a heart healing. So that helps you, you know, help clear your emotional field all the time when you're wearing it. So you get multiple cleansing and calming and shielding all at the same time. So when you wear it, it's just impactful. A lot of people put it on and it's like, ah, oh, it just feels good. You know, it just, it's relaxing. It's like, instead of having going, going for a drink after work, you put that on. It's just like, oh, that just feels much better. Yeah. I haven't taken it off. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've had it three weeks. Yeah. I put it on and the, the exact descriptors, what you just said, I was immediate. Oh, and you know, when you describe it's very interesting when you say people need protection because there's lots of reasons sensitives need protection. Yes. You could be working with people and want to clear your energy. I'm somebody who I found when I would go speak at events, uh, attend events, but mostly speak, you know, there were often hundreds of people and I'm on stage and I love it. I'm a great connector and I love people, but there was something energetically for me. It was a lot when I would get off stage and people would want to come speak to me and, you know, just being in the room with hundreds. And I'm thinking for folks like myself in a situation where well, I don't care if it's a wedding and there's hundreds of people or whatever the event may be, but if the, or going to a mall, any of that is overwhelming to you, an airport, it sounds like these anklets could just really be protective and grounding and create some kind of a shield so you don't have have to absorb that 
Yeah. No, it is, it's very much, that's an accurate statement. It does help you protect. Now, I've talked to many, many people that are working on themselves and, you know, they're advanced. They feel they're advanced. They understand everything. They create their own shields. They create their own layered protection. Every morning they get up and they do it. And that's perfect. And I really, I, I applause, uh, applaud all that work and effort because that's a lot of work and effort to go into all that. What these allow you to do is actually have an external version of that shielding. So if you get distracted in any way, shape or form, and you get, you know, your, your mental state gets brought down to a lower level, you know, stress or, you know, anything going on with family or something like that. And all of a sudden you're, you just lose your focus. Now your shields are dropping. But if Mm -hmm. you're wearing the tools, you're protected anyway. So there's a lot of times where it's like, I do agree that we can do it ourselves. And I do agree. And one of the things I say with these tools is these are basically training wheels for energy, basically help you understand what your energy feels like without being bombarded all the time. Remember that feeling. And then you can create that on your own. But we need to actually get past when the world we're living in right now, there is a distraction at every other second. There's a distraction on the news every two seconds here. And whether it's this way or that way, up or down, or, there's distractions everywhere. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's like these allow us to actually stay in our own energy without having to really worry about losing our shielding or protection. And I know a lot of people don't like say you need protection. It's like, yes and no. Um, we need to be able to understand what our own energy feels like, right? So that when we're in, when we involve ourselves with other people, like you were saying, when you're speaking on stage, you are literally the focus of however many beings are in that room. Now they're all drawing energy from you because you're on stage and you're presenting. This is just the way, that's the nature of what's going on. Now, if it's a good speech and you're doing very well, the energy is going to be transferring to you and it gives you a, well, a high or a very much enthusiastic energy form. And then afterwards, then you have all the people combining on you and then you have all that like a compression of that energy. So it's just like, yeah, you need protection and you know, you, know, you have to keep your shields up. Absolutely. Even while you're trying to formulate the answers to everybody's questions. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I want to say ever since I put this on, People stop me everywhere. I was in Costco the other day shopping, going down an aisle with the giant cart. And this woman came up to me and she said, oh, my God, I just have to tell you that's spectacular. And I've had other people say um, there's a actually a place where we're doing our next sound healing. And the woman who runs the place said, oh, where did you get that? What is that? And it's almost like people can feel it. It's mm-hmm. visually stunning. And I, I it's not even... Right now on YouTube, it's not do, but we're going to show them. You'll show them from your end in a little bit. So you can't see how stunning this is, but it's stunning. Let me tell you. And you don't feel it. It's so light. It looks like it's heavy. It's so light. Uh, So yes, this woman as well said, where do I get it? Where do I get it? So talk about that. Where can people go to look into these, maybe see some descriptions, some pictures, understandings of what's available? Uh, yeah, you can go to the website, energiesofservice.com, energies in plural, I-E-S, of service.com. Um, once you're on there, you can click on individual individual pendants or anklet, and the description in there is about, it's like, what are you looking for? This will this could be your solution. And if, you know, look through the different ones because they all have different solutions and different purposes. Um, and we're st- we still have two more pendants to publish up on the page. I'm still working through the uh, the imaging and to clear up the white you know the white box stuff so that, you know you can see the pendants clearly. Uh, but yeah, I know we're still working on all that. Uh, but everything on the website is basically has uh, what this will do for you. This is a, what it has in it. This is the attributes of that particular pendant or anklet. Um, and this is what you can expect out of it. And in, a lot of times I'll put in there, it's like, this is anecdotal evidence. This is what people have already experienced. Your experience will vary depending on what your energy is. And that has always been my thing. It's just like the tools are energetic, regardless of who you are or where you are. So if you put it on and not feel it, that's fine. Because you know what? They're going to do the work that it was actually mm-hmm. designed to I do. That. Yeah. Um, and, the, and a lot of times when people, it's like, well, I feel like I've got all this and it's like, but the problem is when I put the pendant on, I didn't feel anything. That's perfectly fine. 
the difference is, is now you've actually created barriers to you feeling the energies because you've been, you were probably born super sensitive and you're, you automatically learned of how to suppress that feeling. So when you, when you put something on, that's actually protecting your energy, your body will let the shields down over time and you can actually take it off and understand, Oh, well, that's how that felt. Okay. Now I understand better and it'll help you understand who you are and versus the other energies around you. Because a lot of times people will feel very fuzzy because they've actually just blocked it all out and their, their own personal shields will just basically create like a, a, this barrier of energy that protects you, but it just feels fuzzy. And I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. And it's like, uh-huh. I, yeah. But I've had people say that to me. And then an hour or two later after wearing the, that exact pendant from Archangel Michael, um, he goes, uh, uh, and this is like a YouTuber with 600,000 you know, viewers. He wears it all the time. Yeah. And, and he, I talked to him like an hour later and he's like, I feel great. Mm. Absolutely loves it. And he hasn't taken it off since the same thing with, you know, with, with you, it's like the energy that it actually allows you to feel and allows you to be re more relaxed and understand everything. It, they're really powerful tools. Yeah. I sleep in mine. I shower in mine. Sorry if I'm not supposed to, but I do. Oh, no, it's just... perfectly fine. And it's that comfortable. I just want to say, you know, so all very unexpected and ah, oh, it's same. I put it on and just went, you know, first of all, it looks great with everything. And mm -hmm. I love kind of big superpower pieces. So I love that. And I just want to show folks real quick, because when I received the package, I was a little blown away. Uh, first of all, top class act. You get the most stunning box. I, I'm not even going to show you the box, but you get this silk satin pouch that comes with it. That's got his company logo on it. It's really gorgeous. You get an extra uh, chain just in case, which I thought was very kind. Mm -hmm. Of course you get his card and then this amazing, I mean, this is such a beautiful box. It's just all done so 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 well so you know even if you're going to give a gift to somebody right it's yep. it the whole thing is beautifully done from start to finish i was so grateful to get this i want to just read some descriptives that i've seen out there for your jewelry your pendants your healing devices conscious living auric field protective light pendant merkaba prosperity crystal Copper healing, quantum field, angel, angelic realm, healing coil, tensor ring, ascended master. It's like, oh. did you yeah. ever in your life envision you creating products like this that would heal no. people and change lives? No. Um, <clears throat> as you were describing it, my bio goes, I was a mechanic for the, probably 15 years you know, master automotive certified and all that fun stuff, you know, 15 years doing that. Um, and now I'm working um, in the semiconductor industry and I'm a you know, engineering technician. So that's what I do. Um, and basically when my life shifted, you know, that was many years ago, I started looking at different th you know, things. And as things started to come around, I started understanding more and more became understandable. Um, and actually, uh, was a Gurdjieff actually said, it's like your frequency of being will allow you to understand the different frequencies and different information based on those frequencies. And the higher the frequency, the more tangible, the more, what do I call it? The meatier the information is and the better, you know, the, to help you understand how things are. So when I got out as a mechanic, I didn't understand hardly anything. I was you know, like very 3D, you know, love muscle cars and that kind of stuff and um, getting in technical and stuff like that. I get into, you know, engineering um, and I'm really good with that. So understanding the mechanics and now understanding more, you know, systems and protocols, um, I was able to actually start building these tools and understand the process is a lot easier for me because of my, my history. So all this stuff actually is really interesting. And as I, raise my vibration, more information comes through. And the more, inf more information comes through, the clearer some of the stuff gets. I'm still waiting for more information on some of the new tools coming in because we have some starseed uh, pendants coming. We're still waiting on which crystals are going to be in those. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's one of those things. It's like 
it's interesting. Gurdjieff we used to say that it's like you can actually say you, every single person in a room will have a different definition of a single word. Mm -hmm. So it basically, if you say the word man or the word book, somebody will give have a different definition to it based on their being. You know, it becomes very grounded or it becomes very, very much a higher version of the way you, you know, way you reference those word, words. So when, when Vivian talks or when I talk, the wording comes out in a high vibration so people can understand it in that vibration. And when you're looking at these tools and people see them, those people are ready for that type of information because they're looking at it going, wow, that's amazing. They can see it for what it is. They don't understand it completely because they don't, they've never seen it before, but they're looking at it and it draws them in mm. and yeah, the energy of it alone. Yeah. The, um, just so people know, Vivian Chavez is Peter's wife. She is the Octurian hybrid healer extraordinaire who's been on this yes. show before. And so when you're sharing all this, I, I guess the first question, because I have so many that are coming up. The first thing I want to know is, okay, so here you are, Mr. Normal Guy, mechanic engineer, yada, yada. What is the transition? Did something happen that caused this awakening in you? Uh, a major life shift. So let's just say uh, things changed. Uh, uh, yeah, about 2016, 2017, where um, my life was literally, it got to the point where it was falling apart. And it kind of like when you hit ground, now you can see things differently mm. when you hit the bottom. So we hit the bottom. Um, and after that, some life changes had to happen in order, in order of things for move on. And I started understanding things and things started shifting and my energy started to increase. And I started understanding things a little bit better and things from there actually got, to, um, uh, you know, if things started to fall in place, more synchronicities, uh, you know, it's, heavy life changes happened back then. So it's things had to actually change. So, yeah. And then, and then is it then Archangel Michael and his ascended masters talk about that? What is that relationship about? So what I've had, what's happened to me is I've had a, a bunch of people that are very much connected to higher realms basically come up and basically say, Oh, you're, you're under Michael. You're under Michael, you're under Archangel Michael. So, and then I've actually done, um, Akashic record read to find out um, from one as a person who's very, very gifted at it. Um, she came out and basically says, yes, you're, you're from the angelic realm. So I'm basically angelic source. Um, and I did a whole bunch of lifetimes in Alpha Centauri. And then I've done thousands here trying to help the planet. So I've been around the block a few times here on earth. Um, but the energy of the angels, I didn't even understand what that meant until after that shift started happening um, and getting into the energy fields of what, what Vivian was doing and what she, you know, because she's a teacher and a healer um, and a lot of the folks that work with her and around her that are working in the same, you know, in the same environment. These are the people that are coming to me and saying, you have, you're a part of this or you're this. And I'm like, I'm a, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and as of the last year or two, I've been getting, pretty clear uh, channeled messages, especially for Vivian, that have been pretty powerful and very accurate. And so this work you're doing, and you showed us that blue tensor ring, and you talked about the giant rings and their capabilities. So some of what I understand tensor rings do is grounding, balancing chakras, recovering soul aspects or soul shards. Yes. Can you talk about what is that technology? What does it manifest? Okay. So the tensor technology is actually a very simple technology, no power source required because it has actually been tested and verified as a room temperature superconductor. Um, and it was tested at Lockheed Martin in another lab uh, through Slim Sperling uh, back years ago. Uh, and what it is, is basically one wire and then at one copper wire that's folded back over on itself. So you have energy going in both directions. Um, and then it's basically twisted and then cut to the specific length. So it has to be twisted clockwise for a positive energy. Um, and it has to be one wire folded over in order to keep the energy flow. 
Um, and this was actually something that if you go back, that everything, I believe everything in nature has a positive and negative end to it. So if you take a tree, it has a grounding end, which would be a negative and a positive end at the top of the tree. So when they were actually making their their spiritual huts and stuff like that, they would do, they would go base to top, base to top, base to top on tree logs all the way around. And it would create an energy vortex just using wood. So this was something that's been known for a very, very long time. Uh, what Slim did is he took that and understanding and then flipped it over, created that two-way two -way street with the copper and then twisting it and then brazing those two wires back onto each other. It created an energy field going in one direction mm -hmm. and then an energy field going in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So it created a, a two-way energy vortex. And with the energy, um, with the clockwise twist, it created a positive energy vortex on both sides. Um, Slim Sperling found out that you, if you twist it counterclockwise, it creates a neg negative vortex on both sides. And that's anti-life that will kill and destroy and um, through Slim's book, he actually has a, a, a chapter in it where somebody was experimenting or just kidding around and put the negative side to his heart and it stopped his Why? heart. Why would you experiment? Mama <laughs> and then he flipped it over and then they put the, flipped it over, put the positive side on and his heart started again. But you don't, yeah, don't mess with them. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah, the dark side might have cookies. Not exactly a good thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it's, it's. The tensor rings themselves are all based on the length of wire that they're cut into. It's like looking at a, an old radio dial when you're turning the dial. You have the different frequencies along the line, and they're all a little bit longer on wavelength, right? So 88 megahertz or 107 megahertz, right? So they're, one of them is longer than the other. One of them shorter than the other. So basically what happens is the tensor rings, as they're cut, create that frequency and then you braise it back onto itself and at that point that ring has power mm. and every different length gives you different energy um, the unity ring which we're talking about which is the grounding and balancing of your chakras and pulling in soul shards that one uh, came to me specifically uh, right around the same time i met vivian um, that one was a channeled message to me and it's like, okay, do this. I'm like, okay, I made that one. It's like, I didn't understand that wasn't really energy sensitive on that end at that point. And then Vivian experienced the energy of it and she goes, wow. And this is grounding. This is that. And, and then, um, it was grounding and, uh, balancing the chakras was right up front, but was kind of a more mysterious thing was the, the soul shard aspect coming in. So it's really interesting. And then we found that, um, the energies of the different tensor rings, some of them basically equate to the energies of chakras. So we were able to actually utilize basically a full chakra set of tensor rings. So your the your Solomon cubit, we're talking about changing the color of sound. There's your throat chakra right there. That's how you communicate your communication. So that one there helps you open your communication channels and changing the way you speak and giving you more of a powerful voice. So yeah, that one's actually very powerful in that way. You know, as you're saying this, I can't help but think, and maybe I'm I'm late to the game, but I'm envisioning healers working with these yeah. and having people lay on them for each of the chakras or put them, you know, shamans do this, by the way. Yes. I work with a shaman and she'll do this with stones and things. So I'm picturing your various tensor ring products on the different chakras and like, how incredible that could be for healing. Yes, um, it's exactly right. Um, what Slim Sperling would do is actually in the Vesca Pisces type overlap. So you'd have two rings overlap and then add a third one that overlapped the two and then put them underneath them like the the working tables you would do Reiki energy work or massage therapy on. Ooh. And you'd put the rings on the floor and they would literally be inside that vortex oh the entire gosh. time. I'm so getting goosebumps when you say this. This is so powerful. Yeah. And you know, earlier, Peter, I should have said something then, but I, you, you had the blue ring in the very beginning. You were showing us as an example and you were trying to yes. explain how like a flashlight, the light can go this way, the light can go the other way. And then you turned it right side up. And then you said, and there's a column of light. And I am telling you, I saw light come through it as you did that. Yeah. 
I'll be very interested when Vivian sees this, if she sees the same, but that it was quite <laughs> powerful. So then yes. you give this example of putting these rings under a table while someone's being worked on and, or even if you just use them for yourself and you're meditating. Oh, I, yes. I'm feeling it. That's all I could say. This feels powerful. Like yes. the possibilities the power of these rings is very, very much incredible. Um, we have one that's actually a green one. It won't show up real good because of the green screen behind me. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. But the green one here, um, this one is actually working with the heart. So this one actually works on uh, the heart chakra, higher heart, emotional field, your, and your etheric body. Um, that one, we have big ones, you know, big, big ones. <clears throat> and we put them underneath our chairs when we're at conferences and Viv's doing readings and stuff like that. Um, and it's, we had it happen twice where somebody would literally come down and sit in the chair and literally jump out of that chair within 10 seconds, because all of a sudden, whatever they were trying to suppress emotionally was coming out and they were there. They were literally about to just go. Bwah! Yeah. Right. It's because the mm. tensor rings, it's that one wants to help purge you. Oh, wow. That's an emotional ring. That one wants to purge, especially if you have something on the surface. It will help you literally work through that emotional trauma immediately. And it and we had one lady who was her son had passed, I think it was like 60 days prior. And she sat down in the chair and she literally got back out of it because she was going to start bawling. Um, and we took the ring out so she could sit down and work with Viv. But it was like, yeah, that's what the ring will do. It's like you have you know, undealt with trauma and emotions that you have to deal with. Is scalar and tensor technology somehow connected? Lim Sperling equated it with that. I don't know for sure, but in his book, he actually said it could be scalar, it could be energy or chi, or, and he, he was like, could be uh, tachyon. He said all these, he, you know, in his book, is he, he had like seven different energy sources in a row. And he's like, it could be any one of them. We're not really sure. And how does the Merkaba play into all this? Um, well, what I do is if you look behind me in the, the image, I have a copper pyramid, mm -hmm. um, right? So we do Giza pyramid, and, which is the really wide base. This one is 10 foot by 10 foot, and it's about six and a half feet tall. And what we do is we hang the Merkaba up in the top, near the top. You can barely see it here in that image. Um, but you can see it. There's a crystal, uh, rose quartz crystal ball at the bottom of it. Mm. And when we put the Merkaba inside the pyramid, the healing energy and the, uh, the most like, type of energy shielding that the pyramid creates is multiplied by about tenfold by adding a Merkaba to it. And then you can tune it by changing the crystal. So if you want hard energy, you have rose quartz. If you want clearing, you put selenite. You want to purge electromagnetics, get yourself a shungite one or, you know. Yeah. You know, and you know then you what put I mean. them. You put the Merkaba into the jewelry. No, that's a different different energy field. So okay. what I what the Merkabas themselves actually create an energy field for your, like your healing environment. Um, you can uh, you can hang it in your healing room or wherever you want, and it actually creates a field of energy. It's it's actually quite wide. You put it in the pyramid, and it amplifies the pyramid like crazy. Okay, and do you so sell those? Yes. They're not on the site yet because we're rebuilding. Uh, we, we lost a lot of stuff on our website. We're trying to rebuild completely. So we have to get all the tensor rings up, uh, the Merkaba up, the healing coils up. and Cool. And for people, pairs, just in pairs. case you don't know, I think most people do, just in case you don't know, the Merkaba is related. It comes from the Hebrew word meaning chariot. Isn't that beautiful? A chariot yep. or a vehicle. And also define like light, spirit, body because of the words, uh, it was talked about in the book of Ezekiel and it has to do with sacred geometry and spiritual healing. So mer, M-E-R equals light, ka equals spirit and ba equals body. So it is a vehicle for those. And so I yep. hear you saying, Peter, that you use the technology such as what you have behind you mm -hmm. to charge them, to super charge them. Oh, yeah. And then, so I just have to say, cause like all these possibility downloads are coming into me. Cause I'm even thinking for me, like <laughs> if you hold a retreat, yep. 
and you place these rings and merkabas in a room with the people you're working with for the day or the weekend, Whoa. what that could do healing wise. I'm thinking about people such as myself mm -hmm. who like to do UFO contact work. Do yep. you think that would help? Sure. Yeah. Well, all the, these tools are pretty much all intention based tools. So you can put an intention on the Merkaba to, you know, project a welcome wagon for, you know, those of the light that would, that are coming around, uh, you know, and basically make you invisible to anybody that would do you harm. Uh, that kind of, those kind of intentions you can utilize. Um, you know, it's, I, I think I've, you touched on it, but I'm not sure if you, you covered it. I've heard multiple speakers talk about their Merkaba as our body. So basically we are basically walking around in a high speed Merkaba spinning. Hmm. That's cool. Really? Yeah. I, I, people have actually described that to me like that. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. It goes, well, according to what the energy is, it's like, yeah, that you're, we actually are a spinning Merkaba of light. Oh, I love that. With our particles. I did too. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, so I don't know, but it's just interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it makes it really, I just feel like it's exponential. And, and, and of course, now this is making sense that your tools are called the tools for ascension yes. and conscious living. I got to say, and cosmic living. Cosmic, got to have it. Yes, because we are in, like it or not, folks, we're in the midst. The ascension's happening right now, right? It's going on. Um and it's very interesting. I was just listening to this woman, a really genius, spiritual, she's a scientist, but very spiritual, talking about all the things happening with resonance and with bodies that are literally happening now. She was saying people are going to the ER constantly about heart stuff or like wondering what's going on with their heart. There are people who are having uh, stomach problems or distension. There are a lot of rashes of people unexpectedly are having people whose hair is falling out. Now, not like men and women are suddenly going to go bald. I don't mean that at all, but I have to say, I'm one of those who in the past two weeks, I'm like, are you serious? And I have a ton of hair and I can't believe what's in my hands. Um, so the bodies are doing their best to keep up. There's nothing to be alarmed about. You're going to still have your hair. You still have your tummy, your skin, your heart, all of that. But there are responses happening and purges. And so when I hear you talk about this, I'm thinking this is actually like important yeah. for our lives right now and for helping us through this time. Yes. Um, so I'm going to do a... a two two quick stories one of yes, them is yes. um the archangel metatron anklets and how they came to be i got the channeled message from metatron to create the anklets creating it using a tensor ring and it has to be have to have these five crystals in it and then it has to be covered in a copper mesh and then sealed up it took me about a year and a half to get them working and you know together and viable so they wouldn't completely fall apart or break down so it took a while to get them working uh, but then I didn't actually do anything with it. I got the design down and I got everything good. Uh, got really busy with life um, and then just moved on. Vivian had a, a dream state vision of what was really interesting. It was these three super high vibration, 100 foot ET beings that were standing in this environment and they were standing in their own portal so, if, so they could stay in that environment. And then they had three representatives. There were three women in front of them. And they were talking to Vivian. And through, through the interpreters, the three women in front, they told Vivian, tell Peter it's time. He has to make them now. So the message from Archangel Metatron is to actually, for the frequency, so the crystals themselves, along with the tensoring, create a field to protect your energy. So as we go through this, we're going to be needing this energy shielding. Now, for those that are ready for it and need to actually have this protection, we're going to be losing our electromagnetic shield. The Earth's magnetic field is dropping. We're going through a cycle. We're going through it right now. Um, and the scientific data shows it. We've started losing our electromagnetic field in the 1850s. 
and we're down at least 25% now. So that's why we're starting to see, if you've looked in the news, we've had not just green Aurora, we've had pink Aurora. The pink Aurora is the energy coming into the atmosphere at a lower, you know, closer to the ground, creating different glows. It's like creating a different neon sign. You have different, you know, different air molecules glowing. So these, these are going to help us protect our energy field and help us help protect us energetically. So this is what it was, you know, as intended to bring in here. This is why I'm doing this. It's like, this is supposed to help people. If you're, if you're working on yourself or need help, or you're even, even in the corporate environment, you need to protect your energy field from everybody else because not everybody is maintaining their, their kumbaya because right? people <laughs> are just losing their mind at times. They really are. Um, so you need to protect your energy from others. Um, and it's like, you know, I, when I talk about the tools, I keep on saying the word energy, but it's, that's what they are. They're energy tools. Um, they're designed to create energy and protect energy. You know, they're, they're messages from, you know, the angelic realm. They just are, uh, and they're here to help. Well, as so, you know, and I you know, it. I resonate so deeply with, as somebody who had a, a similar, it's very interesting. I've never met anyone like you. And I had a similar experience where two very reputable people who were doing readings for me said, you are originally of the Elohim. And the first person I thought, what? Brushed it off. I uh -huh. thought that's pretty lofty. Yep. Second person. And like, these are pretty serious, respectable people. And and that, that was it. I just decided I surrender, I accept. And so to hear you two have this story of this deep connection with the angels, I I just so appreciate it. I also appreciate your choice to come here on this planet so many times because this is not, earth is not easy. I heard somebody say, if you all realize, like the reason there's a veil for you all, because if you realize how powerful you were, you would say, what on earth am I doing here on earth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just one of those things. It's like, like you're saying, it's like, what am I doing here? But you have to look at it from a, if you look at it from, for, because I work in the council on the other side. So I'm, I'm not in the, I'm the non-judgmental council when you pass over. That's what I do. So it's kind of interesting when you look at it from a different point of view, look at it from, okay, we're now climaxing over 8 billion, you know, reaching where billions of people now, billions and billions of souls are on this planet. And all of a sudden we're going through this transition time frame. Not everybody's going to make it to the other side. Not everybody is meant to. You have to figure souls came in to experience what they experienced, right? So some come in to experience the beginning of the ascension process. Some people come in just to get that I mean, because we're going through our trials right now, we're being tempted and pushed by every political mean, whether whether it's media, whether it's you know, social media, news, um, it doesn't really matter. We're getting pushed by every single thing. And you have to actually go into yourself and realize what is true. It forces you to really go inside and understand. So if you think of it, if you're coming in here as a, a younger soul, this is going to force your learning curve to an exponential speed by coming in here. So that's why we have so many souls coming in. Whether they make it or not is irrelevant. The soul came in to learn. And if they're going through, you know, they're going through you know, the, the, cheat, the cheat sheet, whatever it is of life to come into a planet under ascension, they're here to do that. But there's going to be a lot of people here that are going to need to be awake and aware and protected when we go through this so that we can help the people that are lost when they get to the other side. Mm. And what on earth are we doing here on earth? Well, we have big shoulders. Our souls agreed and we contracted to do this and we're going to, we're here to help and be of service. Yes, so I exactly. know we have just a short amount of time left. Is it possible to see even quickly a few of your pieces? Yes. Oh, that would be yummy. Okay. Uh, let me switch the camera here. Okay. Um, I'm going to put up the Archangel. This is the Michael. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that so you can see it a little bit better. And this is the one I'm wearing so folks can understand really yes. how gorgeous this is. So it has down in the bottom in the middle is the shielding crystals. 
And then you have your turquoise on the left-hand side, which is the calming on top of many other attributes turquoise has. Then you have your green mic on the other side, which is the heart healing. It's a, it's similar to, it's like the masculine version of rose quartz. So you have that to help heal your heart chakra, but also the masculine side because of the detrimental thing on the patriarchy we've dealt with over the last few thousand years. It put the masculine to the point where it's more detrimental than positive. So it helps heal the masculine side of the heart there. Then you have the selenite in the middle. So that's what the power of this, this pendant is uh, because the tensor rings create um, not only that floodlight energy coming out, the vortexes, it actually has a film in the middle of those rings, similar to like blowing bubbles. So the crystals that are actually in the middle of that bubble field or that, if you want to call it that layer of energy are amplified and then projected into you and out from you in those uh, columns of light. So that's why it, it's so much more powerful. So if you want to carry, you know, turquoise, selenite, and green mic in your pocket, that's fantastic. This is going to take the small amount of crystals in there and amplify the daylights out of that power. So you don't have to carry as much. That's why I create custom ones for people too. So you can put that in there. Um, okay. So the next one here, I'm going to put in here. This one is not on the website yet, mm. but this one is coming. Um, and this one is designed to be a post-traumatic stress healing pendant mm. now this one has all the crystals that the archangel michael has so it has the shielding the calming clearing and healing but it also has another 10 crystals in there that are designed specifically for post-traumatic stress and just dealing with traumas or stress or you know anything in that line even if it was like dream state stress um this pendant here is a crazy powerful pendant and I've been wearing it ever since I made it because I absolutely love it. It keeps my, because I'm a water sign, my, my emotions tend to go up and down because <laughs> uh, I absorb other people, uh, their emotional state, not necessarily their energy, but their emotional state. When people get excited, I get there and, you know, get cry, you know, teary, I get teary. This is what it is. It's more of a mirror, mirror neuron response on that. But this here allows me to stay very flat and stable when it comes to the energies of that. Uh, so this is one I'm trying to get to, um, you know, first responders, firefighters, police, uh, military, veterans. So this is my goal is to get these out there. Uh, we've, we actually shipped the first one to a police officer in, in, in Boston this week. So that'll be interesting to see how that one goes. Just an FYI, my brother does a podcast called First Responders. Yep. True story. So I'll make sure he watches this. Yeah. No, I'd love to have, if he does a podcast with that, I'd love to get this on there because the first responders, they have been, you know, because of the political environment over the last few years, they have been beaten up pretty heavily. Um, and I really feel that they need help, um, especially energetically uh, in order to, I mean, basically when they're out doing their thing, their energy is always under bombardment just by their nature of their job. So this will help protect them and shield them in that way. Mm. So yeah, this one is, um, this one is about to go up on the website. I already have someone waiting for me to put it up there to purchase one. So this is going to be amazing. Um, yeah, they, um, if you can't see it here, let's see if I can get it to glow a little bit. It glows white on the outside and glows blue in the middle Amazing. so when you're wearing it at night wow. it will glow yes wow it's good. really kind of fun yeah you go outside during the day you come inside and it's just like you get this iron man glowy thing on your chest it's awesome mm -hmm, mm -hmm. makes people pay attention to it so yeah, that's that one and then we have the next one which is a very much a personal tool this one is the multi-dimensional this one has all the crystals, the exact same crystal set as the Archangel Michael. The difference here is, as we discussed, these are three completely different tensor rings than the Michael. This one will create a shielding effect, keep your energy calm, clear, and all that. But now you have this, the smaller ring in the middle is the unity ring. So it's going to be keeping your grounding, balancing your chakras and aspects of your soul shards as you go through the second ring is a galactic, which is your crown chakra. And that opens that chakra up. So that one connecting to your higher self. Mm -hmm. 
Then the outside ring is the third eye, which is your uh, Remen cubit. So between those three, you're opening up your third eye, your crown chakra. And the unity ring, we've actually found out that it's actually more of a star chakra, keeping your body in alignment, keeping you grounded. So, you know, putting your star chakra on, it actually makes you that you're here for a reason. So stay grounded. So those three, when you, when you put this pendant on, it will literally open up your, your higher chakras and you start uh, wanting to travel. It, it's hard to stay in your body. Right. This was the this. one I was looking at first. I was like, oh, yummy uh, astral travel and all of that. And yes. I was very excited, but you said, no, you won't be able to sleep with this one on you. You, yeah, you'd have to modulate that. And I thought the Archangel Michael sounded better for yeah. my being. You can sleep with this one. It'll help you do travel and it'll keep you protected. Um, and you can do meditations with it and stuff like that, but it's not a daily driver. You can't wear it all day. This one's going to keep your body. It's going to keep your energy kind of like wanting to go out. So when we're here doing our work, we can't do that. We have to stay in our body. So, <laughs> Well, while yes. you show us the next one, if you don't mind, just mention, I know February 10th through the 13th, Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo, you're going to be there. Uh, you yes. will have a booth and show us the next one while you talk to us. Okay. Yep. I got to grab one down. Go ahead. Um, yes, I'm going to be doing, Bev and I will both be at that expo, which is going to be interesting. Cool. All right. So uh, this, is this one is cool. the Archangel Metatron pendant. So this one is the straight up shielding. It is based off of the anklets themselves. So when you put this one on, you tend to feel, um, you, you all of a sudden you'll get a quiet energy feeling. So it's kind of quiet energetically, but you'll feel warm because it actually isolates your energy field and it creates such a strong energy, you know, shielding effect to your body. It, res it starts resonating in your body until you get your, until your energy starts balancing out underneath it. So that's this one here. Yeah. Yeah, it's stunning. And the the rope, the blue rope corresponding with the blue stones is magnificent. Yeah. yeah. And I, while yeah. you show us the next one, Peter, show us the next one. This is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? Okay. Let me see here. Future dreams, future goals. All right. Oh, I love when the light hits this one and you can see the green. That's amazing. Yes. This one is the uh, green mica and selenite. This one is the heart healing pendant. This one is extremely powerful, trying to deal with you know, energy of emotions that are clogged up. So the center will glow green and the outside will glow white. Amazing. It looks so, like so it has a green mica and the selenite on the outside. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll cover this real quick, and then I think we gotta wrap up here. Um, this is the Archangel Metatron anklet. So this is the anklet you would put on. It goes down, and I basically I wrap my sock over it. I put them on every day, um, and right now they're this is the most recent design. They're very much protected, so the copper is not going to get damaged or anything like that. And we still have the five crystals that are in here in here so you don't see them because it's inside the copper mesh and again folks if you're listening to this on podcast i highly highly recommend you go to youtube.com slash debbie dashinger spell it d-e-b-b-i no e d-e-b-b-i d-a-c-h-i-n-g-e-r.com well that's my website youtube.com slash debbie dashinger <laughs> forgive me a lot of websites and URLs, but the point is you can see this magnificent work and we haven't covered all of it. I know he's rolling out a few pieces we haven't talked about. So what do you next dear to dream, Peter? What are your future dreams and goals? Um, well, we need to get the, the products up on the webpage so that the webpage can actually represent the, the work, that, uh, the body of work that we have. Um, but the next thing coming is going to be um, the star seed pendants mm. so we're going to end up working on um, creating a star seed set i think we're going to be doing a, a small subset up front for the you know the major star seed environment you know star seeds that are here you know, uh, you know 
you know, Octarian, Andromedan, you know, Orion, that kind of thing. And we're going to get the bigger ones out of there at Palladium. Um, and what they're going to do is we're going to be creating them with a tensor ring that will actually vibrate to the, what they need and have the crystals in there to what they need. And then we're going to actually have it inscribed in there for a light language or some sort of energy in it. It's going to be laser etched into the pendant so that the energy of what that of the transmission forum is going to be there. So that's what's coming. This is amazing. Amazing. Yep. And, and then we're also working on a uh, entity ward, yes. being able to actually etch into the pendants and entity ward so the entities cannot enter your field. So you could be under attack and it won't even come near you. Thank you for the amazing work you do and for continuing to expand and grow and allow and receive and then deliver to us such spectacular pieces. I know I'm so grateful. This is probably the first of a few. I mean, sound things. It's incredible what you're doing and what you're Thank capable you. of. So I'm just so proud of you. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And I know there's more to come. Absolutely. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, my pleasure. Yes. And for folks who are really like chomping at the bit, you can go to energiesofservice.com. Peter Benson out of Arizona, creating these fine tensor ring healing technology. And I end the show with this quote. It is a Chinese proverb. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Yep. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger show. And next week on the show, I am featuring the singer, Sarah Hudson. Sarah is a light worker, a multi-platinum songwriter, vocal producer, and icon, Sarah Hudson, a member of the electro pop band Ultraviolet Sound, is also Kate Hudson's first cousin. Her godparents are Hudson's mom, Goldie Hawn, and Steven Tyler. Remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. And during this time of great ascension and conscious living, there are tools such as what I'm wearing and what you can wear that will help you at energiesofservice.com. Be well and prosper. <laughs>